but they want you to counter correct them or they want you to fall for connecting if you stay in detection mode what's happening you stay neutral cold indifferent then you're not feeding them a reaction but that's hard for codependents to do because when someone's attacking you with judgments and contempt and stuff to get underneath your skin so they're there to get under your skin, under your skin, under your skin. So they're there to get under your skin, make under you your skin, have under your doubt, skin. Have so doubt, have doubt, have doubt, make you have doubt, have doubt, have doubt, make you. It's hard not to try to connect and correct. You want to stay in neutral detective mode. And if you can't, record the conversations as much as you can, so then you can review it and learn their patterns because most abusers only have like two or three plays they did they make. So if you can record it, then next time you can do better. And that's a more reasonable goal. Don't try to beat them just yet. You have to learn the game. So you have to take some blows and then slowly stay in detection mode because a lot of the stuff they're saying is just made up. There's no need to fight back. There's no need to correct them. There's no need to get into the blood wrestling. But it's hard, yes. So let's go back to the basics, codependence. This is codependency, ladies and gentlemen. It is a neurotic drive, no choice, no freedom, to serve, to serve, to submit, to fawn, to supplicate. Why? It is a terror of negative emotions in yourself and in others. We focus on the negative emotion, but what's the first word there? First word is terror of negative emotions. So that's an inability to stay in fear. So the other person has a negative emotion. You fix it. You rescue their negative emotion. So you're using anger to correct their negative emotion as a displacement tool for discomfort of what if, the fear of the unknown, the fear of your world falling apart. The fear of some parent figure getting angry, hitting things and blowing things up. So it was a genuine fear when you're growing up. And it's still a pattern that's in you. But now as an adult, you're overreacting to repetition, compulsion, old patterns of terror, of negative emotions. And then what you do, or what codependents do, is they correct, they fix the emotion. They don't even realize it's anger. But if you're jumping into someone's world who hasn't asked for help, who's not saying they need help from their emotions, you preemptively jump in. You're invading their world by using anger to correct their emotion. And a codependent will say, oh, I'm connecting. This is my way of connecting. But are you connecting? You're fixing their emotions. What? How are you showing you? <laughs> How are you meeting them pure person to person vulnerably. You're the rescuer top down. That's your way of connecting. Because until a codependent owns how they're using your anger indirectly, <laughs> you're going to be stuck with the addiction because using anger is fun. <laughs> it gives you feels like power. It's something. It, so we continue those patterns, but you're using it pa passive aggressively. Because you're rescuing somebody first, and then the secret contract is that they reciprocate. And when they don't reciprocate, then codependents have resentment, and bitterness, and betrayal. Say, so, I'm a nice oh, person, I so I want you to be a nice person. Well, the other person says, yeah, you're a nice person, thank you. I don't need to be a nice person back. But the problem is when you get, when you wake up to this, as I have, because downstairs is a house guest who's doing this and I'm doing gray rock, dull, boring. And the more I do that, the more intense it's getting. And we're, we're on, it's like this at the moment. It's great fun. <laughs> because they're but doing it's for my anger. I can feel my anger wanting to correct and I'm not doing it. <laughs> 
So you stay in neutral. You don't give them anything, but then they're going to escalate because they want yeah, to feel const- you out. Yeah, it, it, it's just going up and up and up and up. Mm. As therapists and really human beings, most of us really, really want to put the other person at ease. We want the other person to feel better. See, now that's her motivation, not the person. So a lot of therapists and codependents are not comfortable with someone else suffering, someone else emoting. So you're fixing them out of your personal need. That's where it's a passive aggressive move. You're correcting their feelings, but then you're telling yourself a story that you're a helper. You're connecting. You're not acting out of your terror. (laughs) You're correcting their feelings because this was your old pattern of surviving as a childhood or wherever you went at it, who knows. As a therapist, I feel like that's my job, that's my role, that's why you're coming to see me. I got all these great tools, let me fix you. It's very hard to resist the urge to help someone, maybe even against their will, even against their will. The urge to help your patients is the cause of practically all therapeutic failure. Most therapists are addicted to helping (laughs) your patients. Right. And that's why you get stuck, get stuck. Let me fix you. That's the underlying message of all the words is let me fix you, let me fix you, let me fix you. And then it's a willpower versus willpower. And the therapist might be able to overwill you. But then the narcissist abuser is a better manipulator and they're going to override any work you do in therapy because <laughs> they have faster impulses. They can so use inter- tone better. Now, so internally for codependence, um, it's being the the red flag that's happening inside is to be with um, the terror. As to stay it, in detection I mean, mode, ultimately yeah. to be calm. That's when they say calm. The pointer is to calm your nervous system, and my pointer is to say stay in your fear mode, which is to detect or be a detective, be neutral, go meta, be observer, stay detecting. But if you're caught by anger and rage and you want to fix as a passive aggressor, in today's meeting, I said, if the person's poking you and you're poked and you know this is going to last two hours and eventually they're going to blow up, just blow up right there. Save yourself the time of two hours back and forth. You know they're going to just wear you down. Just blow up and go crazy once you start knowing you have a loose battle. I have to admit that that's where I'm at at the moment. (laughs) um, Downstairs. It's just just about ready for me to go, hey, listen, I'm fucking sick of this crap. (laughs) Yeah. What if we're addicted to detective mode? I'm addicted to... Oh, uh, staying detective in detective mode. mode? Yeah, oh, I can. I can observe. I can observe what's going on. I've got. Oh, you wouldn't believe. Oh, and this happened, and that happened, and oh, rescue me! And I'm just sitting there going. But it's making me angrier and angrier until I'm either going to snap or leave one of the two because that's all that's left. So you have to balance detective mode with some sort of correction. For codependence, you might want to try to correct the other person's feelings. Instead, you correct your own map of the world. So your expectations of how people should act in a utopia world probably should be updated. You're expecting too much from your abuser if you've known them your whole life for many years that they're always impulsive and they never change. And you still want them to change? So it's time for you to I don't want them to change. I just want want to know what they're going to do next. It's almost like at this point... Like they don't know what they're going to do next, Lori. How do you the know? Dots. That's where you have to use your sadness. <laughs> God, not the sadness. I like angry baby. I don't want to be sad baby, ever. You've got to have all three of these emotions to be fully human. Yeah. So yes, if you divorce yourself from one of them, any one of them, you're not going to be able to navigate the world well. Busted.